Uh, L I, LLCs are probably the most popular structure right now. Um, of course, you have sole proprietorships, which are basically, um, you know, just somebody going out, starting a business, no uh, paperwork really um, to, to do that, no uh, legal documents or registration with the Secretary of State. Uh, it's the cheapest, easiest way to kind of go out and start. Um, and then partnerships are uh, the second op option. Um, basically those, uh, if you have more than one person, uh, you always have to have more than one person have a partnership. Um, and then, so you have shared management duties um, and each general par partner is personally liable for the partnership obligations. Um, you can have multiple general partners or you can have one general partner and then limited partners, uh, which is, uh, makes it a limited partnership. Um, and a lot of times uh, limited partnerships are used for uh, like single construction projects. You may have the one general partner and then some investors that come in as limited partners um, who they basically, all, all they have on the line is what they have invested in that project. Um, whereas a general partner, you know, if something happens and they get a lawsuit filed against them, you know, they have what, what is invested in that project and their own personal assets are subject to that lawsuit. So uh, being a general partner, uh, there's more responsibility. Um, you have a little bit more on the line. Um, and every partnership must have at least one general partner. We have Corporations, um, of course, everybody thinks of corporations as, you know, the big uh, corporations, you know, Coke and uh, those kind of corporations um, where it's, you know, multiple investors um, and there's really no, no limit on who can invest in a corporation um, and Corporations will have um, a perpetual life, so it doesn't matter if the original owner uh, passes away. They've it's set up to to uh, go on uh, forever, basically, um, and has a board of directors. Um, board of directors hires, um, you know the. CEO, CFO, and, and those sort of things. Um, and the corporation pays the corporate income tax. It's the only uh, entity that pays tax separately. All the other entities, uh, the tax actually gets paid, the income tax actually gets paid by the individual owners. Um, the corporation is liable for its own debts, um, so, you know, the debts are, in other entities, the debts can, uh, like in a general partnership, uh, the general partners are liable for the debts of the company. So if the, if the corporate or the partnership can't pay it, the partners will have to pay those debts. Um, with a corporation, if the corporation can't pay it, they can't go down to any of the shareholders and, and say, we, we need you to pay these debts off. Um, <clears throat> and the stockholders um, are only liable for uh, what they have invested in the company. So uh, kind of along the same lines, if the company's ever sued or uh, anything like that, they can't come to the investors, the stockholders, and, and try to get money from them. Everything cuts off at the corporate level. Um, and stockholders end up paying tax on the dividends that are distributed out to them. Uh, so the corporation 
pays tax, corporate tax, um, and then if they have money left over, they may issue a dividend to the shareholders, and then the shareholders are taxed on that dividend uh, at their individual income tax rates, which that's, if you ever hear of the um, double taxation, that's what they're talking about, because the, the corporation pays tax on the income, and then when it's distributed out to the individuals, they pay tax as well. Um, that's the, the big drawback of uh, being organized as a, as a C-Corp, is uh, you have the two layers of tax, um, which is a disadvantage. Um, C-Corporations, um, they do have the ability uh, increased ability to raise capital. Um, they can you know, issue more stock uh, to help raise capital. Uh, it's also um, can be easier to borrow uh, money. And it's also easier to transfer stock uh, to other individuals, uh, easier to sell it or uh, you know, gift it to uh, later generations. Um, and like I said before, the management fiduciary responsibilities are vested in the board of directors. Um, so it, it kind of all falls on them. Uh, they're in charge of uh, hiring the, the people that are going to run the day to day operations. Um, and then uh, standardized statutory method of organization, uh, management and finance. So uh, all that's kind of laid out, the board of directors uh, kind of decides the direction they want to go, um, how they want to um, obtain financing and, and that sort of thing, and then the CFO and CEO uh, kind of execute the plan. So next we'll go to S corporations. Um, this is a, another very common uh, entity structure. Um, there's the difference between the S corporation and the C corporation. Uh, the main difference is there's no corporate tax paid by the S corporation. Um, all of the, the profit or loss from the business just gets reported by the individuals on their individual income tax returns. Um, so the corporation doesn't pay any income tax. Uh, it all passes through. Um, so you only have one layer of tax. You don't have two with, like you do with the C-Corp. Um, but it comes with restrictions. Uh, you must be a domestic entity uh, with only one class of stock. So all the stockholders have to be treated equally in an S corporation. You can't have anybody that gets, uh, gets money before the other shareholders. Um, everybody has to be treated equally. Uh, there's a limit. You can only have 75 shareholders. Um, and there's limits on the types of shareholders you can have. Um, some trusts can, can own S corp stock, but mainly it, it uh, is uh, just regular individuals uh, that can own it. So there's, there's advantages on the tax side, but there's also limitations that you have. Um, and then there's also uh, rules, the passive income from things like dividends, interest, royalties, rents, annuities, and securities transactions cannot exceed 20% of revenues. Um, so basically they, they want the S corporations to be active businesses um, that are generating uh, a profit um, and not just something set up for somebody to, you know, keep their uh, investment accounts and stuff in, run those through. Limited liability companies, these right now are probably um, the most common entity structure we see. Uh, advantages uh, over both partnerships and close corporations. Uh, 
they have the limited liability, which um, S corporations uh, have limited liability. You can only, um, <coughs> you're only liable for what you have invested in an S corporation, and the same with an LLC. Um, and so that, that's why a lot of people like the, the limited liability companies. You still get that same uh, limited liability, but it's a lot more flexible than an S corp. You don't have the limitations on the number of investors, um, and you can treat people differently and investors differently. Um, you don't have to, uh, you know, with an S corporation, if you just make a distribution, everybody has to get their same share of a distribution. With an LLC, you know, if one guy owns 80% and he pretty much runs it, he can say, well, I want to take a distribution, but I don't want to give the other people a distribution. So there's a lot more flexibility um, with what you can do. Um, and with an LLC, most of these are taxed as partnerships. That's the, the default. If you don't choose to be taxed uh, as an S corporation, you're taxed as a partnership. Um, and says it uh, can be expensive to set up and administer, but in my experience, they're, they're not very expensive. Um, it kind of depends on how complex you want to make it. Uh, if it's you know, just a few people, um, you know, you can have an attorney draw up a, an agreement uh, fairly inexpensively, and uh, I think it's 100 or $150 to do the initial setup with the Secretary of State, and then it's $25 a year uh, fee with the Secretary of State to, to continue that, so not very expensive. Um, now, if, if you have a lot of members and uh, you want to get real complex on uh, you know the organization documents and everything then I'm sure you know you can spend as much as you want with an attorney I've seen uh, you know LLC's that they have you know 50 60 partners and um, and they it's basically you know just the same as if it was a a partnership or an S corporation um, treated just the same uh, for tax purposes and uh, for legal purposes they're uh, very similar um, you know they don't put those things in an operating agreement and it's kind of a hey this is what we're gonna do and they think everybody's on board and later <laughs> people start arguing and um, but yeah they had I mean you can, I, I, I've seen several where, you know, they have about half of the people um, work actually in the business and then they bring in outside investors who put in the money and the, uh, the other members that work in the business, they don't have to contribute any money up front because they're the ones doing the work. That's kind of what they're adding to the, to the business. Um, so you, if you're investing in an LLC, you, you really have to understand, you know, what's going on and, uh, and if, if you're putting in money, maybe not everybody else is and, and understand how they're going to do distributions and, and that sort of thing. It, you know, try to make sure that, um, that it's set out. Uh, how they're going to do distributions, and it's not just um, the majority owner deciding on a whim when money will be distributed. Because you have that flexibility, people aren't always sure uh, when they may be getting their uh, investment returned to them. Uh, and this, um, you know, like an S corp and a partnership, uh, it well, it can be taxed as a partnership or as an S Corp. So all the income just flows through and gets reported on your income tax return individually. Um, and that's another issue uh, to watch for with all the, the uh, 
flow through entities, the partnerships, S corps, and LLCs. Um, it, you can that income gets reported to you, and you you have to pay tax on that whether you get any money out of the business or not. So, you know, they may make you know fifty thousand dollars, and you have to report your share of that on your income tax return. But if they don't make a distribution, you're not getting any money out of the, the entity, the business, to pay that tax. So if it's a single member LLC, it's what we call a disregarded entity. So the for tax purposes, they basically look at it like a sole proprietor. Um, they, they don't treat it any different. Um, you just report it on your individual tax return um, and you don't have to file a partnership return or an S Corp return or anything like that. Um, so a lot of, most people um, nowadays, you don't, you don't see very many true sole proprietorships. Uh, almost everybody sets up an LLC and it's a single member LLC because they still have that, still offers the limited liability, um, but everything else is, is the same. Uh, as a sole proprietorship, so. Uh, next. Joint ventures, um, you don't see these uh, very often, at least I don't. Um, they're generally created around a single activity or project. Um, each joint venture partner contributes proportionate share of resources um, and receives proportionate share of profits. Uh, similar to partnership and that liability may be unlimited. So, uh, you know, just like if you're a general partner, um, you're liable for the, the debts of that, uh, that joint venture. Um, you know, even if, even if the joint venture doesn't have uh, the assets uh, to pay off all the debts, then they'll come to you and say, you know, you're liable for these, we need to get some money. Um, it's usually, um, there's usually a joint venture agreement uh, contract, uh, the incorporation of separate joint venture business entity, um, which would be a corporate joint venture, uh, or the establishment of a partnership uh, that runs the, the joint venture. So uh, there's several ways you can do that, but uh, you know, basically that's usually where you have, um, you know, maybe two businesses that are set up as, you know, partnerships or as corporations or um, LLCs that decide they're going to come together and work on a project and, um, you know, usually they're, they're large projects, otherwise it wouldn't necessitate, uh, you know, actually going through the trouble of setting up a joint venture. but. Um, that way they can, you know, set up something, have a, have a contract, everybody have an understanding of how uh, everything's going to work. Uh, so I'm not sure as far as, as bidding on projects. Um, you know, I think, I think the others are just probably seen as more stable and um, it's easier if you need to bring in somebody else to help you out you can do that. With, with a sole proprietorship, you can't really bring in more investors. Um, so, uh, and, you know, as far as getting loans, um, I'm not sure what the, the reason is, um, but that's, I just don't have enough experience with uh, with that side of it, you know, issuing loans and. Or it says unlimited personal liability on that. I think people look at it as if they incorporate, you know, it limits their liability, so maybe they're a smarter business person. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> But it's, and another thing, it, 
Yeah. If you're a sole proprietor and you're you're going to get a loan, um, you know they they have to look at your all your personal finances to decide whether they can give you that loan or not. Where if you're a, a you know an S corporation or a partnership, you're going to give them the financial statements for your business, and they'll look at that, and it's um, less complex, um, I think, to to look at that than look at some an individual's whole financial uh, personal financial situation um, so um, a couple things I wanted to to kind of touch on um, you know I probably most of you are already set up as is a have your business structure uh, set up already um, but you can change uh, you know, if you're an LLC, uh, you can elect to change and be taxed as a, as a different, uh, you know, if you're taxed as a partnership, you can change and elect to be taxed as an S corporation and if you meet the qualifications and all that. But, um, or if you decide to, to set up a new business venture, um, you know, always talk to, uh, you know, an attorney or a CPA. There's a lot of, um, different things that can come into play uh, with the differences in the, the entity structures um, and like debt is is one thing that's uh, a major difference be between partnerships and S corporations um, how the debt is treated uh, in an S corporation um, to get um, Basically, to get the advantage of having the debt, you have to um, personally loan the business the money. Um, if you uh, take out just a loan, even if you co-sign on the loan uh, individually, then uh, you don't get the advantage of that being taken into account when they're allowing losses that you can take. Uh, whereas in a partnership, as long as you, you know, guarantee that loan uh, through the business, you can get that. Uh, you get that advantage of the of that um, debt being considered when they uh, when you consider for taxes what losses uh, you can claim on your tax return. So there's lots of other things like that um, that can. Uh, that are affected by the entity structure you choose. So, um, you know, talk to, you know, your attorneys and CPAs and uh, bankers and um, just, you know, be open with them and tell them exactly what you want to do and uh, what your goals are. And then that way they can uh, be sure and um, give you the advice that you need and know that you're on the same page. So. Um, were there any other questions about the business structure? No? All right. Well, that's all I had on that. So should we take a break right now? All right. Take a break and... Oh, yeah. If you're a sole proprietor and you're you're going to get a loan, um, you know they they have to look at your all your personal finances to decide whether they can give you that loan or not. Where if you're a, a you know an S corporation or a partnership, you're going to give them the financial statements for your business, and they'll look at that, and it's um, less complex, um, I think, to to look at that than look at some an individual's whole financial uh, personal financial situation a couple things I wanted to to kind of touch on um, you know I probably most of you are already set up as is a have your business structure uh, set up already um, but you can change uh, you know if you're an, an LLC uh, you can elect to change and be taxed as a, as a different, uh, you know, 
if you're taxed as a partnership, you can change and elect to be taxed as an S corporation and if you meet the qualifications and all that. But um, or if you decide to, to set up a new business venture, um, you know, always talk to, uh, you know, an attorney or a CPA. There's a lot of um, different things that can come into play uh, with the differences in the, the entity structures um, and like debt is, is one thing that's uh, a major difference be between partnerships and S corporations, um, how the debt is treated uh, in an S corporation um, to get um, basically to get the advantage of having the debt, you have to um, personally loan the business the money. Um, if you uh, take out just a loan, even if you co-sign on the loan uh, individually, then uh, you don't get the advantage of that being taken into account when they're allowing losses that you can take. Uh, whereas in a partnership, as long as you, you know, guarantee that loan uh, through the business, you can get that, uh, you get that advantage of, the, of that um, debt being considered when they, uh, when you consider for taxes what losses uh, you can claim on your tax return. So there's lots of other things like that um, that can, uh, that are affected by the entity structure you choose. So, um, you know, talk to, you know, your attorneys and CPAs and um, bankers and um, just, you know, be open with them and tell them exactly what you want to do and uh, what your goals are and then that way they can uh, be sure and um, give you the advice that you need and know that you're on the same page. So. Um, well, there's uh, different rules like, like we were talking about for, um, for the basis calculation, um, which basically you have to have basis in the, uh, the S corporation or the partnership to be able to deduct the losses from that. And uh, so there's differences with the way loans uh, are handled. Uh, affects the basis differently um, and other than that it's uh, it's very similar um, between the two uh, you know the main differences are um, the way the flexibility you have um, with how to how to do distributions and uh, and that sort of thing with a with a partnership uh, or an LLC uh, tax as a partnership, um, you can, you know, you, even if I'm 50% owner with somebody else, we can decide that, hey, any of the profits are going to be split 30-70, um, you know, so you can really do whatever you want uh, with a partnership or an LLC, um, but with an S Corp, you ha everybody has to be treated uh, equally based on their uh, ownership percentage, so uh, all the income uh, expenses have to be uh, split up uh, based on the ownership percentage. Uh, all the distributions have to be made uh, based on ownership percentage. Um, so those are uh, the main differences. Um, you know, other than that, uh, you know, the the way the income flows through and is taxed on your individual return. Uh, is is the same, so. Objectives show you how to build a successful relationship with your banker and uh, how to maintain the relationship. Um, why you need a banking relationship. Um, of course, checking account, um, borrowing. Uh, it's good to have a, a relationship set up. Um, makes it easier to to go and get a loan if they already <coughs> know you and have worked with you. Uh, and then, of course, other bank services, uh, payroll and cash management. There's, there's lots of ways that 
that bankers uh, can help you uh, with all aspects of your business. So uh, it's good to, to talk to them and uh, you know just tell them what you're wanting to do, what you need help with, and um, there's probably some way that they can help you out. So. Um, you know, your goal is to leverage your equity to achieve a high rate of return on your investment, um, and bankers can help you do that. Uh, they can, you know, with loans and, and different things, um, you know, help you get all you can out of, out of your investment in the, in the company. Uh, and the bank's goal is uh, to earn satisfactory return for the bank while minimizing their risk. So, uh, you know, that, that's what they're always looking at, uh, the risk involved in, uh, you know, issuing loans and, uh, and you know, weighing that against what their return is going to be. So, um, bridging the gap between your return and the bank's safety, uh, satisfactory loan proposal showing you can repay the loan, um, and your willingness to accept a loan structure that assures the bank of your ability to repay. Um, you know, basically, that's just that's what the, the bankers are looking at. They're, they're wanting to make sure that if they issue you a loan that they have to feel comfortable that you're going to be able to repay that loan. And, you know, that may mean you have to accept certain uh, loan covenants, uh, loan structure that, that they need you to accept to be able to, to issue that loan. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, that may mean, uh, you know, keeping a certain amount in the company instead of taking it out uh, for yourself, um, that sort of thing. Reasons for borrowing, uh, of course, uh, long-term sales growth, uh, short-term sales growth, uh, inventory expansion. So, you know, if you need, uh, you know, need inventory but you don't have the cash to to go out and, and buy it right now, uh, you know, get a loan to to get the inventory and then pay it back after you sell it. Um, uh, receivables slow down, so maybe you have a lot of people that owe you money and and you can't get them to pay, uh, and then you need to uh, to get some some cash to be able to keep your business going. Um, of course, capital expenditures that's probably the thing most people think about is uh, you know loans for vehicles or equipment uh, or you know buildings. Uh, that sort of thing. Um, cash flow timing difference um, kind of goes in line with the receivables, um, but you know, basically, you're you're doing business and making money, but just the way the timing of when the cash comes in and goes out, uh, you just need some help there. Um, and then unexpected events, uh, accidents, and weather. Uh, you know, maybe something comes along and destroys your building and uh, vehicles that you have in your yard or what have you, and uh, of course you're probably going to need some help to get back up and running, so. Uh, one thing, uh, one thing I did want to touch on um, with the banking, um, a lot of times we see um, people when they have a business uh, and they have it set up, you know, as an S corp or partnership or LLC. Um, you got to have a separate uh, bank account for that business, and um, a lot of times people, when they're the sole owner, or it's just them and their spouse or them and their brother or sister, or what have you. Um, they think, well, it's it's our money, and so they just use the business checking account as their own, which causes problems. Um, 
So you, you've got to really keep them separate and, um, you know, don't go, go to Sam's and use the, the company credit card to buy all your groceries for the month. Um, <laughs> well, I don't really have any experience working with uh, anybody that's, that's gone to a factoring company, but I, I do know that it, it's fairly expensive. Um, you know, I think it's, it's one of those situations where you just have to, as a business, um, be sure who you're, who you're doing business with. Um, make sure you know don't don't let people uh, get to where they owe you a lot of money um, you know and, and if you're doing work for somebody and it's a substantial amounts of money uh, you know check them out first you know get uh, financial statements from them um, you know basically you're basically the bank at that time uh, you know look at them just like if if you were going to loan them money, write them a check for, for the money, um, you know, because if you do the work and they don't pay you, then, you know, it's the same as, as you just writing a check for that money and being out. Um, you know, I think that and and just, you know, staying on top of it and, and watching those and, and you know, if, if it's been a month, you know, send them a letter, you know, don't let it get six months down the road and, and they still owe you money and uh, and you haven't checked back in with them. Decrease in liabilities, um, pay trade debt or pay bank debt, um, and then decrease in equity. Uh, if you pay a dividend or uh, have, you know, distributions from a, an S-Corp or a partnership, uh, it's going to decrease your equity. Uh, or if you're buying out other owners uh, that could decrease your equity. Uh, banker's loan decision process uh, is just kind of what they're looking at, what they're thinking as they're uh, deciding whether they're going to loan you money for something. Um, look at the purpose of the loan. Um, you know, is it legal? Is it ethical? Uh, and does it comply with their policies uh, at their bank uh, with, you know, what they uh, will loan money for and amounts they'll uh, loan. Um, repayment analysis, um, and, you know, I think this is the, the main hurdle uh, is, you know, they, they always look at cash flow. Uh, it doesn't matter what income you show on your financials. Um, you know they're they're going to look at the cash flow and make sure that you can you have the cash to to pay them back, um, and then they're also going to look at uh, collateral. Um, you know, if you're buying a vehicle or a building or uh, anything like that, uh, of course it's going to be collateral. Uh, you know, they may also ask for um, you know receivables uh, to be collateral or. Uh, some other asset that you have, um, and uh, then there's also guarantees where, you know, you uh, personally guarantee the loan. So if the business can't pay it back, um, then you've guaranteed it. So you individually uh, would uh, be liable to to pay back that loan. Um, the structure. Um, pay in full, uh, pay on time, and pay as agreed. Um, and, you know, you can, you can structure loans a lot of different ways. Um, so you can, uh, you know, work with the, the banker and, you know, it can be, you know, something where the interest accrues for, you know, the life of the loan and, and you just pay back the lump sum at the end. Uh, the, the amount you borrowed plus the, the accrued interest um, so you don't have to make payments over several months. So if you, you know, if you, say you have a big project uh, that you're going to be working on and it's going to take a couple years, um, you know, maybe you can agree that you don't have to pay every month, you'll, you'll pay, uh, pay the full amount at the end after you've completed that job and, 
and have that money. Um, and the pay on time and pay as agreed, um, you know, I think are pretty, uh, pretty much the same. I don't, I don't know what the difference is uh, between those two, uh, but uh, you know, there's there's lots of uh, ways that they can structure loans. So, uh, you know, just talk to your banker and uh, you know, tell them what your needs are, and they can probably figure out a way to to help you out and, and make it work. Um, a loan request, um, you're going to specify the amount uh, and what it's going to be used for. Um, the purpose, uh, you know, if it's going to be working capital or equipment um, or something else. Um, the type of facility, uh, a loan or a line of credit. Um, the difference there being a loan is, is basically a set amount uh, that you take out and usually make uh, you know, periodic payments uh, back on that. Uh, and where a line of credit is, is you know, just something you have set up where you have that amount available, uh, you can borrow at any time. Um, you know, up to that limit on the line of credit. So, uh, yeah, there, there's different banks have different, uh, philosophies. you know, philosophies and kind of target clients. And um, so, but yeah, it's, it's building that relationship and that trust because, you know, their whole thing is they want to limit the risk. So if they've worked with you before and you've always paid on time and, and, you know, that sort of thing, then, you know, you're likely to get a, a lower interest rate than if you just come in off the street and, um, you know, your financials are in disarray and, uh, you know, you may be even lucky to get a loan because they're, they're looking at, um, you know, the risk and, and how much they can trust that you're going to be able to pay that back. And I, I've had bankers... Um, that we work with, um, you know, they say, you know, if there's certain accounting firms that if I get financials from them, then they're like, okay, yeah, they're good. And there's other ones that if I get financials from them, then, you know, I can basically throw them in the trash. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, yeah, you know, they, they know, they know which ones they can trust and which ones, uh, you know, it's just somebody taking numbers and throwing them on a piece of paper and <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, there's, you know, you, you know, talk to your, your bankers and, uh, you know, ask them stuff like that. Say, you know, is there somebody else you think I should be using or, you know, or, you know, if, if, are there different, yeah, and it's, it's one thing that I think a lot of times people, especially when they're starting out, they don't, they don't keep up with the accounting side of it as much as they should. They just, they, they just look, if they have money in the bank, then, you know, that's all they care about. And, but then once they go and start trying to get loans and, uh, you know, if they're, you know, doing other things that people are wanting to see financial statements and, you know, it can be a huge mess to try to clean that up and, and get it in order. And then, you know, you're just paying an accountant more to try to clean it all up than, than if you, you know, keep it in good shape from the start. So there's very few that, that run the business and do the accounting themselves that, that do a good job because when things get hectic, that's the first thing they put aside. And then, you know, when you're going back trying to figure out what happened six months ago, you know, it's just, you can't do it. So, um, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff, you know, plays into, into your obtaining, obtaining financing and, um, you know, how, how comfortable your banker is going to be uh, loaning you money. So, uh, and then, of course, uh, I think it talks about this somewhere, but I'll touch on, on oh, 
on the guarantees, if you're if you're personally guaranteeing the loan, then you're also going to need uh, personal financial statements. Uh, so that's another thing to uh, to consider. And let's see, credit analysis. Um, they're going to look at your line of business, um, the ownership and management. Um, you know, how much experience uh, and education and training you have, um, percentage of ownership, you know, who owns uh, the majority of the business and, um, you know, who's really running things. Uh, you know, if there's a board of directors, who's on the board, what experience they have, what knowledge they have, um, that sort of thing. Uh, track record. How long you've been in the business, um, you know, successes that you've had, uh, failures, um, you know, what what customers you work with, uh, are they reliable? Are they, um, you know, if you have, you know, half of your business comes from one customer, you know, it's pretty important to know whether that business is going to be around uh, uh, when they decide to loan you money. Uh, suppliers, are they reliable? Um, what kind of competition you have? Uh, are you going to be able to to compete if there's, you know, a downturn in the economy? Um, or are you going to be, you know, the first one that's uh, going out of business? Uh, and, of course, industry conditions and trends, um, kind of all that plays into uh, into their analysis. Uh, financial statement quality, uh, kind of what we were talking about just a minute ago. Uh, are your financial statements audited or unaudited? Um, and then if, if they are audited, uh, is a CPA firm experienced in the construction accounting? Um, and even, you know, I've had clients that come to us that that worked with people, worked with firms that claimed to be, you know, construction experts and, you know, barely had a clue what they were doing. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it all depends on uh, the quality of the, the CPA firm uh, on what kind of financials uh, that you're going to get. There's um, also, uh, you might also hear uh, compiled financials and reviewed financials. Uh, compiled financials is basically where the uh, CPA firm takes all your transactions and records them and basically does the accounting for you. So they'll take your check register, bank statements, and all that and record all the transactions, uh, you know, the way they need to be recorded. Um, and then there's... Um, reviewed financials where either somebody has compiled the financials or, or you just bring them the financials that you've prepared and it's they look over everything analyze it um, but it's not nearly to the degree of audited financials but it gives bankers you know some degree of uh, certainty that you know somebody has looked over this they've ask some questions, um, you know, they feel comfortable that it's, you know, in pretty good shape. Um, but, uh, you know, the, and of course the audit is, um, you know, the all out, um, checking everything and uh, doing all the tests and, yeah, it's a lot more expensive. Um, but uh, sometimes, um, you know, depending on how big you are and how much uh, <laughs> money they're going to loan you, they, they may require you to have audited financials and, uh, you know, depending on who you work with, uh, other, uh, you know, contractors or, or what have you may require you to have audited financial statements. Uh, or some of them just require a review. A review. So there's, there's several different levels and um, kind of 
the audit's the most expensive, then review, uh, compiled financials, uh, a little bit less expensive. A lot, a lot of times, uh, what you'll see is companies, like a lot of times what we do is we, we work mostly with the clients and we compile the financial statements, but since we compile them, we're not allowed to do the review. It has to be an independent, because we're not considered independent at that time, because we're, we are recording the transactions for the client. So we'll compile them and uh, you know we're the ones that work with the client, but then we send it to another CPA firm who reviews it, reviews the work that we've done, uh, and so they can sign the review report. Um, and, you know, they're going to look at completeness, um, you know, the balance sheet, income statement, uh, cash flow statement. Those are the, the three main ones. Um, and, you know, a lot of times the, the bankers are looking more at the balance sheet and the cash flow statement than they are the income statement because there's, there's a lot of things that, that can affect income um, that don't necessarily uh, affect um, the cash flow as much. So, um, and that, that's the main concern that the bankers have is the cash flow, making sure that you have the cash to, to be able to pay them. Um, and then uh, receivables aging, payables aging, uh, you know, how long does it take you to collect your receivables uh, and how long does it take you to pay your payables? They're, you know, those are uh, things they're going to look at. Uh, make sure that, you know, if you're, if you're taking a long time to pay your payables, then you're probably going to be taking a long time to pay the bank back too. Um, and then contract status report, um, and I'm not. You you guys may be more familiar with with that than me, um, but uh, you know probably just looking at uh, the status of the contracts and uh, dive into a little more detail on financial analysis. Um, the internal trends in comparison with industry statistics. Uh, so they'll they'll compare your business uh, to other businesses of similar size in the same industry. Um, you know, to see even though you may be profitable, you know, it may be <coughs> less than or more than uh, you know uh, comparable uh, companies in the same industry. So. Uh, there's lots of services out there that uh, kind of track those things and they can uh, compare those, compare your business to other businesses and look at profitability and liquidity, um, leverage and solvency. Uh, you know, all those are, well, the last three are all balance sheet uh, trends and uh, looking at how much cash you have um, compared to your debt and um, you know if you need to to sell off to, to pay the loan how easy is it going to be for you to, to sell those uh, sell your assets and uh, to be able to generate some cash um, cash flow they'll look at historic cash flow uh, what it's been in the past and uh, then they'll do projections um, you know they're going to project most likely what it will be going forward and then uh, maybe look at the downside uh, you know if there, things don't grow as fast as they have been if there's a slowdown um, or if um, you know you have to pay some higher interest rates or uh, something like that uh, kind of take those into effect and see if you're still going to be able to to pay those loans if if things aren't going perfect. Collateral, um, kind of touched on this earlier. They may ask you to to put some of your receivables up as collateral, um, fixed assets. Um, you know, usually that's 
uh, if you're getting a loan to purchase a fixed asset, the fixed assets uh, almost always going to be the collateral, uh, but you may own fixed assets already uh, that they ask you to, to put up as collateral on a new loan uh, that's not being used to purchase that asset. Um, and guarantees, um, this is where uh, they're going to need personal financial statements. Um, they must show, show joint owner, owners of any personal assets. So, um, you know, they're only going to consider, you know, your share of ownership and assets. So, uh, you know, if it, you and your spouse own something uh, together or, um, you know, if your family has a, a lake house together or something like that, um, then they're only going to consider, you know, the, your share of those, the ownership in those. And, uh, you know, something with, with a lake house, if you own it with, you know, if you have two siblings that you own it with, well, they may not consider that because, you know, what are the chances that, you're going to be able to convince your siblings to sell that house and get the cash to pay off the loan. So um, they'll look at the adjusted net worth. Um, so they'll deduct the investment in the company um, because they're already considering that uh, on the company side um, as the value of the, the company. Um, deduct any assets hard to liquidate, kind of what I was getting to with the, uh, the lake house example. Um, you know, if you have things that are just going to be hard to sell, um, then, the, you know, it's not going to be easy to, for them to get their money. Uh, and then they'll consider if there's any liabilities not on the personal financial statements. Um, so maybe if you have, you know, a lawsuit against you or uh, something like that, uh, can take that into consideration. This kind of gets down to, you know, just having a relationship with them and, uh, you know, explaining everything to them and being, uh, being open and honest. Um, you know, translate the reason you're borrowing um, that specific amount, you know, what the purpose is, what you're going to use it for. Um, be able to show you can repay the loan in that time frame um, and be willing to guarantee uh, the loan you know they if you're not willing to guarantee then that shows them that you know you're not you're not as sure as you need to be that they're going to be able, you're going to be able to repay the loan um, and of course they're going to look at personal financial statements and uh, tax returns. Uh, so if you're behind on filing your tax returns, you have to get those caught up and, uh, and then be willing to collateralize, um, you know, put up some assets as collateral um, and help the banker get the information he needs, um, which Maybe, uh, you know, talking to your accountant or um, other people that you may work with, attorneys or what have you. Um, and, you know, you've got to just be able to, uh, to be completely open with them. And uh, if they feel like you're trying to hold something back or hide something from them, then, you know, that's not going to be a risk they're willing to take. Um, and you know it may be something that you think is is a big deal and you don't want to tell them about um, but you know you got to tell them and sometimes it may be something that isn't a big deal to them so uh, or they can they can figure out a way to to work around it so um, and then they may ask questions uh, to your suppliers or customers bonding company, lenders, competitors, accountant, lawyer, um, 
So let those people know that, you know, you're going to be borrowing money and, and the bank may be calling them and uh, just let them know what's going on so they can, uh, they can be, provide the information that the, the bank is requesting. Um, then check your uh, personal credit report. Um, you know, make sure there's nothing on there that, that is inaccurate. Uh, get all that kind of stuff cleared up before you uh, before you go to the bank and it'll help speed things along and uh, cut out a, a lot of work. Uh, um, build your professional support team. Um, you know, work with lawyers that are experienced in construction uh, or real estate law. Um, and try to enlist a couple outside directors. Um, if you have directors in your, uh, like a board of directors, um, lawyers, accountants, engineers, um, just people with different experiences, different knowledge, um, it's going to help you uh, make better decisions and uh, you know lead your company in the right direction. Of course, keep in touch with your banker. We've talked about this, and you know just uh, you know it's about building that relationship and keeping them informed of what's going on in your business, um, whether it's good or bad. Um, and you know they have they they know a lot of people. And so they're, they're only making money if you're making money and you're able to grow your business. So uh, they're going to do everything they can to help you out. Because um, if you're not around, then, you know, they can't <laughs> loan you money and uh, make money themselves. So summary, uh, you know, build a, just work on building that relationship. Um, and you know, be open and give them all the information they need. Um, work on getting it to them uh, as quick as you can. Uh, and you know, show that you're willing to back up your request uh, by making guarantees or uh, providing collateral. Uh, maintaining the relationship uh, means giving banker access to you, your company, and your jobs. Um, you know, they may even want to come out, tour your business, you know, see some of your, uh, the jobs you're working on, uh, just so they can have a better idea of, of who you are and what you do. Uh, it's a lot different seeing what somebody's put down on paper than go out and actually uh, look at it. And uh, like I said, just keep them up to date on good news and bad news. Um, so, well, that's that's all the slides we had. Um, does anybody have any other questions about the banking or going back to the entity structure or just any other general accounting questions or business questions? <laughs>